Amen. We need excuses to get together. We really do. Thank you for being here. We want to open up with a word from the Lord. No, it's not. Okay. We're going to open up <clears throat> with a word from the Lord. Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect. To the choir master, a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaves his chambers, and like a strong man runs his course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the earth and its circuit to the ends of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The percepts of the Lord are perfect, rejoicing the heart. The encouragement of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they, than they, than gold, even much more than fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his arrows? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Here is God's blessed word. Next we have prayer. sins and rose again from the dead. We worship you on this your day, for you are the resurrection and the life. In you, Father God, the gospel comes, and we know, dear Father God, that we need to tell the gospel to everyone we know. Dear Lord, we want everyone to know who you are, but most of all, that you know them. So dear Lord, we come this morning asking you to forgive us of our sins. We come praising your name and lifting your name up on high. Because you are truly worthy, O oh Father, to be praised. We rejoice today in the blessings which you have brought to us by your resurrection. You are our Savior who has met every power of evil and has overcome every enemy. We have nothing to fear even in death. For you have proved yourself Lord of death and have the keys of the grave. You will rescue all your people from death's power. On this Lord's day, Father God, we think of you as a way beyond death, and able, therefore, to lead us through death. Bring us into living fellowship with yourself. And may, may this be a day to us, a resurrection day, a day of victory over old sin, a day of new life and hope. Help us to conquer some earthly desires and enter into some new freedom. May we rise into newness of life. May you make this Sunday one of real blessings to us and to many others. Bless the churches everywhere. Let the power from on high be given to all who preach the gospel and to all who teach in the Sunday schools. Help us open our hearts and receive your love and power and your Holy Spirit. And we will give all the praise 
to the Father through you, O Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Good morning. Good morning. McKinley family, good to see all of you. Didn't expect to see you here. Um, great grandbabies were born, so they have some twins and y'all look refreshed. Well, first, let me just simply say uh, it's so good to be with you again um, this bright and beautiful uh, Lord's Day, amen. It's a wonderful time to praise the Lord, and we cannot take that for granted, amen. Okay, okay. She, she's letting me know she's going to sit with Elizabeth. She's going to relocate. Um, but if you are visiting with us for the very first time, I uh, met my brother Eugene, is that right? Ernest, Ernest, Ernest from North Carolina. Who all here is from North Carolina? Hey. There we go. <laughs> okay, and we got, we got Jasmine over here in the back. Um, so so you're, you're welcome, um, brother. We, um, we thank you. And uh, anyone else uh, who's visiting with us for the very first time, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that... Uh, something this very uh, day will be said or done to encourage your soul and your heart in Christ. Amen. We pray that um, through the fellowship, through the songs and the, the hymns and the preach word that you would be edified and encouraged in this day. All right. Wonderful. So a couple of announcements. Kashara, you want to help me out or? OK, come on. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, so as you can see on the slide, uh, just weekly, we're actually trying to transition the like reoccurring announcements. So look out for that, um, myself and Alex. We're going to try to actually push the weekly reoccurring announcements. We're going to try to put that on the website um, versus just keep having the same kind of reoccurring emails. I know that can become redundant at times. Um, and so we're going to try to transition that. So give us, you know, give us some grace, pray for us as we make some transitions. Um, but as you can see, the senior Bible study is this Tuesday. It's going to be virtual. Um, and then we still have our midweek service will be this Wednesday. We also have our prayer services, which is Wednesday um, evening and then on Thursday morning. So again, like I said, we're going to be transitioning. Um, so just pray for us during that transition. Uh, we want to definitely send another congratulations to the retiree, Carolyn Contrera. Um, so this was a lovely uh, surprise for her on Monday, and I know Pastor Fox, he might have some other um, pictures to share. Ms. Marianne also may have some other pictures to share, but again, we just wanted to highlight you, congratulate you. Um, and we also want to congratulate all the retirees. Um, it's a lot of, I know the choir in itself is, they, everybody's retired. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. I got about 20 more years, but I'm gonna get there. Um, so again, we just, we wanna highlight and congratulate all the retirees um, for all your hard work. Um, outside ministering to others and then as well now they're having the opportunity to minister here at Oakland and just throughout the community so God bless you and we are excited for your new journey as retirees um, birthday celebration so we want to celebrate all of um, March is just awesome period I mean we're just great people um, so sorry. so we want to highlight um, as we come to the end of this wonderful month, um, Deaconess uh, Marissa Martin will be celebrating her birthday, as well as our honoree, um, our retiree, Carolyn Cantrell, will be celebrating her birthday this week. Same, um, again, just wanted to reiterate um, to the women of Oakland, Please, if you have not already, sign up for our small group sessions. Um, it's, it, you know, as we continue to grow, again, this information will be put on the website, as well as we'll have some additional um, communication lines um, just for the women of Oakland. But if you have not, again, you can use the QR code, as well as if you need um, any additional information, you can just reach out to myself, 
and or um, Miss Marissa as well. And lastly, just last two reminders, the Vicki Bell Scholarship for all of our seniors as well as our college students. This um, scholarship is phenomenal. I know I am a honoree of this scholarship, Nichelle Terrell, old school. She's also an honoree. We have Kiana. We're all a part of this um, scholarship. And again, it was very beneficial for us as we transition to um, college. And so we want to make sure that our high schoolers know that this opportunity is here. So please, if you have any questions, you can reach out to my mother, Karen Terrell Hargrove, also um, Deaconess Rainey, also um, Miss uh, April Belt would be also another person to contact if you all have any questions. And then we're still accepting donations for the uh, diapers. Miss Marianne can give you more information about that. Um, but again, as you see fit as God laid it on your heart, please feel free to donate the uh, diapers and wipes as we support our young um, mothers. Thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you, Kashara, for that. Um, I think one or two more announcements that I had, and we will get into our pastoral prayer. Uh, first, let me just say this. Um, so we get to the retirees party on Monday, and uh, I'm set there to, to pray and uh, to close it all out. And she introduces me. She said, all right, and I, I brought my pastor. My pastor's here with me. And um, yeah, I, br I brought Pastor Hayes. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, hey, you know what? It, it's all right. He's, he's still my pastor, too. So we are in good company. We are in good company. Um, no, we, we had a blast. I, I, had to, I had to say that. When I saw the picture, it reminded me. I said, man, this did me like that. That was dirty. Um, OK, the other announcement was next Saturday, that's what it is. Next Saturday, April 1st. For any men here, any, any men who want to join, Ryan, I see you here. Um, any other men here who want to join us next Saturday, April 1st, we're going to be hosting um, the um, Final Four March Madness here at the Oakland Baptist Church. And so we're going to be streaming um, uh, the 6 o'clock game. You know, we got service next the next day. So uh, we're going to be uh, streaming the 6 o'clock game. And so if you want to come out and fellowship with us to get to know us, to hang out just a little bit here at the Oakland Baptist Church, hey, uh, come next Saturday. Um, and we will have some, I believe, uh, registration um, info out in the vestibule. But you can feel free to contact me or Mike Williams in the back if you could raise your hand. Um, and we'd love to, love to see you, love to have you. We'll have food there, so you don't have to bring anything, just bring yourself. Um, but that's next Saturday, uh, April 1st at 6 p.m. The final thing, um, who all here was, uh, joined us on Wednesday for the grief session? Raise your hand. Yeah, pretty, it was awesome, wasn't it? It was. Man, we had a wonderful time. So if you are here and you are interested in learning a little bit more about grief, lament, um, depression, and how uh, the Bible helps us move from that state of life to a position of hope, amen? And so um, if you are interested in learning a little bit more, we just scratched the surface on last Wednesday, uh, but we're going to dive deeper each and every week. And so we have two more sessions. Join us this Wednesday at 8 p.m., okay? So we'll send out another reminder. But we had just such a wonderful time, and, um, you know, we're, we're anticipating that it just keep getting better and better, all right? Wonderful, wonderful. So, so those are our announcements. Let us get ready to... Uh, Clear our hearts and minds and go to God in prayer. Amen? All heads bowed. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we confess together, O oh Lord, that we have sinned against you. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. Heavenly Father, we have sinned by what we have done. And Heavenly Father, you also know that we have sinned by what we have left undone. Lord, we have not loved you with our whole heart. Lord, we confess that we have not loved our neighbors as we have loved ourselves. 
Lord God, we are truly sorry and humbly repent in the name of Jesus Christ. We're asking that for the sake of your son, your only begotten son, that you would have mercy upon us, that you would forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would delight to help us to delight in your will. Help us to walk in your ways. To the glory, praise, and honor of your great name. And so, Father, like David, we cry out, create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. Help us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which is ours in Christ Jesus. Fully pleasing unto him and bearing fruit in every good work. Help us to be strengthened with all power and might and according to your glorious might. That for all endurance and patience with joy that we would give thanks to you, O oh Father. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to be steadfast and movable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Help those to see our good works and give glory to you who are in heaven. Now, Heavenly Father, as we continue on in our service, we ask that you would have your way. Move in the lives of your people. Lord, we're thanking you even for our visitors, even on this morning. Bless them in a very mighty and special way. So, Lord, we commit all these things and many other burdens and trials and sorrows and cares unto you. Father, you know what we stand in the need of. And we know that you will supply our every need according to your riches and glory. So, Father, we love you, we adore you, and we bow down before you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And the church said amen. Amen. And amen. If you could rise to your feet, we're going to sing our song of prep and we will get, in, get into today's message. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're asking as we look deep inside your word that you would speak unto us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, my Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What we know not, we ask that you would teach us. What we see not, we ask that you would show us. And what we are not, for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we ask this day that you would make us. Form us into the image of your darling son, Jesus. Lord, we love you and we adore you. In Jesus' name, the church said amen. amen. I ask that you would keep me in your prayers. I woke up, I just do not feel that great this morning, so I'll be wearing my mask and um, uh, will abstain from hugs and things like that at the door this morning. But I uh, just don't feel that great at 100%, but uh, just trusting God for... Uh, his strength. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's, it's like nowadays you get a cold, you don't know if it's COVID or, or not, you know, and, and colds came back with a punch. I don't know about you, but uh, colds are just like, we're not going to let you forget about us. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't do anything though. I'm just, I'm just, I didn't do anything, you know. Uh, anyways, Anyways, uh, join me in Ruth chapter 2, the book of Ruth chapter 2. We're in a series we're titling All Things for Good. And how many of us know that God works together all things Amen. for the good? Amen. And we're uh, wasn't able to finish last week, so we're in a series within a series. And we're calling this series uh, Count Your Blessings. Amen. Count Your Blessings, the lesson of chapter 2 uh, taught us that no matter what you're going through, the Lord, our God, can be trusted, and uh, his blessings are never, ever far from us, amen, and uh, we saw that God does the extraordinary in and through the ordinary things of life. Uh, last week, we talked about his great providence, amen, we talked about uh, the fact that God brought them back at the right season, and God always has uh, a timing for, for his purposes working out in your life. And then we saw that God also uh, providentially worked a right secret for them. He had a, he had a ram in the bush uh, to meet exactly what they needed. But then also um, God worked out the scenario in their selection, her Ruth's selection of the field. She, she didn't know what field she was going to, but happened across the field of... Uh, Boaz. And so we see God's invis invisible hand working all things together. Alex, if you don't mind, I'm, I hear some... Uh, thank you, brother. Ruth chapter 2, you there? I'm going to pick up at verse 3. It reads as this. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz who was of the clan of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. And then Boaz said to his young man, who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came, and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. 
Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping, and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and she said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me. And how you left your father and mother in native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done. And a full reward be given to you by the Lord. The God of Israel whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord. For you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. Drop down to 17. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley. She took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She brought it out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said, where did you glean today? Where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law, with whom she had worked and said, the man's name with whom I work today was Boaz. Her mother said to her daughter-in-law, may he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living and the dead. Naomi said to her, this man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. And Boaz, I'm sorry, and Ruth, the Moabite said, beside he said to me, you shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. 22 will end here. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, lest in another field you be assaulted. Keep close. Keep close. Thus ends a reading of God's holy, written, and inspired word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, what a beautiful story. We are um, in part two of what we're calling uh, Count Your Blessings. Uh, the song goes, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. That's our, our theme this morning. Uh, there was once a, a terrible storm which uh, descended upon a small town. Uh, that storm, that town rested between two rivers, and so the downpour uh, turned into a, a, a wild flood, and as the waters began to rise, a, a local preacher in that town kneels in prayer on the church porch, surrounded by water, and by and by, uh, the townspeople pass, and um, one of the town folks came up the street in a canoe, and he says, uh, you better get in, Reverend, the, the water's rising uh, rapidly, and it's, it's coming very fast, and the Reverend uh, responds, he says, I have faith in the Lord, I have faith that the Lord's going to save me, and um, so he, he goes on and still the waters rise and by now the, the preacher is up on the balcony. The water had reached high um, ab above and so now the preacher has to go to the second floor. He's on the balcony. He's wringing his hands in supplication. He's praying and crying out to the Lord his God and, and now a, a man, a neighbor uh, in a motorboat, a speedboat comes by and he says, Reverend, you better get in this boat. Uh, these waters are rising, this, this levee is about to break, and, and the preacher once again continues praying. He says, no, I'm going to be steadfast, I'm going to be immovable, I'm going to be always abounding, and, and nothing is going to happen. The Lord's going to save me, he's going to deliver me, and he quotes some more scripture. He says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and the man down says, uh, Reverend, it looks like that water's about to prosper. <laughs> After the levee breaks, the flood rushes over this church and only the steeple remains. And lo and behold, the preacher is up there on the steeple, hanging on for his dear life, clinging to the cross. And now all of a sudden, a helicopter descends out of the clouds and a National Guards person cries out through the megaphone, uh, preacher, you need to grab this ladder. This is your last chance. Once again, 
The preacher insists that the Lord will deliver him. He continues praying and he says, no, I just need to wait on the Lord. He will renew my strength. And, and now the preacher goes down and uh, sadly the preacher is engulfed in the water and he, he dies. But he's a pious man. He's a, he's a righteous man. He believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he goes to heaven. And once he reaches heaven, he, he goes to the gates and he talks to St. Paul. And he says, St. Paul, I need to talk to Jesus. I just need a little talk with Jesus. And, and so St. Paul takes him to Jesus. And he says, Lord, I, I prayed earnestly. Where were you? I prayed that the, the, the floods would stop. I prayed that the rains would stop. I prayed for deliverance, but you left me there to drown. Why did you do this? I don't understand it. The Lord Jesus answered, my, my child, I heard your prayers. Not only did I hear your prayers, I answered your prayers. I sent you the right people. Not only that, I sent the right people with the right provisions. One came in a canoe, the water wasn't that high. The other one came in a, in a motorboat. When the water got higher, then when the water was, when you were on the steeple, I, I sent the helicopter. I sent you the right people with the right provisions for your circumstance and situation. I got a question for you, says the Lord. Why did you send them off? Brothers and sisters, many of us here today, are more like this old preacher than we like to admit. Uh, we are quick to believe that Jesus, when we are in a bind, when we're in a fix, we're quick to believe that Jesus has forsaken us. In reality, beloved brothers and sisters, we're often so blind to his blessings. We wouldn't know a blessing if it knocked up us upside the head. It's hard to count your blessings if you don't know what a blessing really looks like. It's hard to thank God if you don't, don't, don't understand how God usually works. We're so often looking for the extraordinary. Uh, we're so often looking for manna from heaven. Uh, we're so often looking for God to part the Red Sea. Beloved, there is only one Red Sea that was parted in the Bible that I could read. Uh, he did part the Jordan, but there was just one Red Sea. Not only that, when, when the people of Israel got to the promised land, when they got to the land of Canaan, you remember in Joshua, there was at one point the, the manna ceased. We must count our blessings, but before we can count our blessings, we need to begin to understand and recognize what a blessing is in the first place. And then you also need to know, beloved brothers and sisters, that no matter the obstacles or the challenges or the hardships and the difficulties, and there are, they are numerous in this life, you need to be assured that God has been, God is today, and God forevermore will be in the blessing business. They never cease, says Jeremiah. His mercies never come to an end. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord does not always answer our prayers in the way that, he, that we expect. God does not always package a blessing with a, a bow on it, with great big lights on it to light up Times Square. It doesn't always ring out blessing on the package, but it is a blessing indeed. Yeah. Scripture, and really our theme is all things together work for the good. All things not just the, the, the large things, not just the extravagant things, not just the, the great big things, but even beloved brothers and sisters, the small things, the little things, the, the, the tiny things in your life, God is working even those things together for your good. How does God ordinarily bless? Last week we saw that one way which God blesses us is by his providence, but uh, two other provisions in that illustration which, which we started with will serve as our two points today. God ordinarily blesses first by his gracious people. First by his gracious people. Secondly, we'll see that God blesses by his gracious provisions. His gracious provisions. We'll take those one at a time. First of all, let us consider the fact that God often blesses us by his gracious 
people. There are a multitude of lessons here just in this text, and I want to just walk you through a couple as quickly as I can. First, the text teaches us this morning, saints, that God can send you the right people at the right time. Uh, verse 4 opens up, And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. And once again, the, the author is signaling to us that something extraordinary is happening. But see, to, to Ruth and to Boaz, this is just ordinary. They just woke up that morning. They did what they would normally do. And uh, God was doing something extraordinary, but in time it looked ordinary. Let me help you with that. In 1994, there was um, a visiting scientist at the University of Minnesota. His name was Wang. He, he was a non-believer. And while there at the University of Minnesota, he met some Christians and he, he uh, grew a deep friendship with them and they, they had great fellowship and friendship. But um, when they learned that he was going to return back to Beijing, they gave him the name of a Christian to contact who was also moving there too. On the flight back to Beijing from Minnesota, the plane encountered some engine failure and troubles. It was so bad that they had to stop at an emergency landing in Seattle. But while in Seattle, the airline placed Wang in the same room of the very person that this Christian group gave him to contact. Y'all not even awake this morning. <laughs> Y'all not awake. The two began meeting together once they arrived safely in Beijing. And uh, they met for a Bible study. A year later, Wang gave his life to Jesus Christ. It looks ordinary. But it's extraordinary. And what you need to know, saints, is that God can arrange all this. You don't need to chase his blessings. You don't need to, to hurry God. In fact, you can't hurry God. God is not in a hurry. God's time is always the right time. And, and I know we spoke about that. I won't hash that out again. The Kairos and Kronos, you, you know that. You took some notes. I saw you. But, but see, um, even if you don't know that, it's, um, you don't have to have that language. You don't have to know uh, the, 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 the doctrines of it all. But all you need to know is what the old saints used to sing is, he's an on-time God. Uh, he, see, he may not come when you want him, uh, but he'll, he'll be there right on time. He, he's an on-time God. He's on time all the time. God can, can, can work this out in an extraordinary manner so God can bring to you the right people at the time that you need them most. God works this out. It's like he's the director and he says, lights, camera, action, and Boaz enters the scene. And if you're looking at the, at the, at the picture, Boaz and, and Ruth are in the same camera frame. They don't even know it. But that's how God can work it out. But uh, anyways, God can send the right people at the right time. But what I like about this is, is God also sends the right people with the right heart. Amen. See, when you, you are in some trouble, you don't just need anybody. Right. Anybody in this world can't help you. You need the right people. You need the right people with the right resources and the right heart to help you. And that's what God does. He, he sends the right person with the right heart. I, I like this because um, the text tells us in verse 4, it notice his first words. The Lord be with you. I, I like him already. Uh, this is during the time of the judges. Um, faith was not some great thing happening in Israel at the time. Um, but Boaz, the first words we see out of his mouth is he pronounces a blessing upon his workers. You're not helping me. Um, this was Monday, not Sunday. He who lifted up his hands in church and said a blessing on Sunday came to work on Monday, his government job, and said a blessing there too. All right. Uh, he ain't talking about sports center. He's not talking about the final four. He, he, this, he's not talking locker room talk. He's not cursing his workers. He's not badgering his workers. He's not complaining about his workers. He's pronouncing a blessing upon his workers. A Christian anywhere ought to be a Christian everywhere. A, a Christian anytime ought to be a Christian every time. We're called to be 
in the world, but not of the world. Um, one puts it this way, it's right for the church to be in the world, but it's wrong for the world to be in the church. Uh, Hudson Taylor said it this way, we often take it for granted, either Christ is Lord over all of our life, or he is Lord not at all of any parts of our life. Uh, he doesn't compartmentalize church and worship from a Sunday-only activity, but, but Monday through Saturday and Sunday, he's worshiping the Lord. He, he looks at the Lord. He acknowledges the Lord in all of his ways. So he sends the right person with the right heart. But notice his first glance. He says, who is this woman? And it's interesting, some believe this is a romantic kind of statement. I, I, I don't believe it. You can see her now. She got sweat on her brows. She's been working all day, right? This is hard work. This is uh, backbreaking work. This is, she's not trying to look cute. <laughs> her clothes are perhaps ill-fitting at the time. Her, her sandals, uh, they're, they're poor, they're widowed. They, they don't have that much. They're, they're suffering from poverty. Her sandals are razor thin. She, she hadn't looked like she slept in weeks. She, she looked like she'd been through hell and back. This is not a romantic encounter. Amen. But he notices. I'm just glad that he notices. And see, that's the right heart of a right person. They, they can look at somebody, can see what they're going through. You know those people, they can look at you when you're talking to them and they ask you how you're doing and you say, okay, they're like, no, no, how are you? <laughs> Tell me the truth. <laughs> Boaz is observant, he's looking and she's lowly and he is, he, he's, he's a worthy man and it just tells you something of his heartbeat and his integrity and the foreman just says, oh yeah, she's, she's that woman, he don't even say her name, he just, she's that woman from, from Moab. But see, that was enough for Bo, Boaz to go off of. So God can send you the right people at the right time with the heart, but notice this, with the right words. Um, I remember teaching over at Thomas Edison High School. I was with, um, with Fellowship for Christian Athletes with, uh, with Elder Witt. And um, he had me teach a lesson on, I think it was, it was on Ephesians. I can't even remember. It was early on in, in my teaching ministry. And I, people kept saying, you have a gift of teaching. I could not see it. I did not believe it. And so, um, but I, I worked Hard. I worked, I was up late, maybe till 2 in the morning. The session started at 6.30 in the morning, and so I was tired, I was worn out, but I did all the diligent study that I could, and so I get in there, I'm teaching these high school coaches, and it's early in the morning, and they're, I mean, I hit them with all I could. I don't know what I said. I, I promise, I, I mean, I probably preached the whole Bible front and back. And, uh, and it was over just like that. And, and, but, but that particular day, uh, Deacon Parker, 6.30 in the morning, uh, some of y'all don't know him, one of the most godly saints that you can ever, ever meet. He's in glory now. But um, he came in that morning and, and sat through the whole, I can't even call it message, Bible study, uh, diatribe. Uh, he sat through it all and we walked out at the same time and uh, we walked out at the same time and again I'm, I'm not sh I don't know what I taught but I tried my hardest and, and he just said a couple words he says son you did a wonderful job in there church I'm trying to tell you I could have God could have took me to glory already <laughs> I mean, there could have just been an angelic escort just come, come down and get me and go and take me up to glory. I needed a word of encouragement at that time. If I needed a, uh, somebody else to grumble or complain or critique, he would not have sent Deacon Parker. He would have sent somebody else. God can send you, church, the right people at the right time, with the right heart, with the right words. Boaz, look at his first words. Look at his, they're here in the text, verse 8. He says, my daughter. He, he did not look at her as a sex object uh, at all. He, he did not look at her as marriage material, says the Bible, but, but, but not somebody to be taken advantage of. But instead, the man of God sees this daughter of God as a child of God first. He's a man of integrity. Daughter. Not only just daughter, my daughter. 
He, he took personal accountability and, and used the term of endearment unto this widow, this poor widow who did not even, uh, was not even born ethnically in Israel. He calls her my daughter. What do you think that did for her faith and encouragement? That she's in a strange place, in a strange land, with no friends. She left all her family, and there somebody is. The first words out of his mouth are, my daughter. God knows how to do it. And the other thing that the Bible teaches us about Boaz um, and godly people that God can send into your life is that uh, he practiced what he preached. In other words, his doctrine wasn't dead, but it danced. Uh, his orthodoxy had attached to it some orthopraxis. Uh, he, he had right beliefs and right actions and right activities. James would say faith without works is dead. And beloved, he loved his neighbor and his God at the very same time. And y'all not really helping me here today. But um, everybody talking it ain't living it. Everybody who praying near you ain't praying for you. That's the reality. But, but that's, we, we don't see a, a double-minded man in this man Boaz, do we? He, he loved the Lord, his God. He practiced what he preached. He loved his neighbor as himself. There are four concrete actions or blessings which he bestows upon Ruth that the Bible says. Um, first of all, it says he promoted her. Uh, verse 9, she, again, she came, she was a foreigner, she went to glean, that was a provision in the law, you could see that in uh, Deuteronomy as well as Leviticus 19, it was, it was a portion in the law, but um, he went to the spirit of the law, she had no job, he said, I'm going to give you a job, not only am I going to give you a job, you don't only get to reap the, the, the edges of the field, I'm going to put you with my workers, with my employees, they follow the reapers, so now you have a job for this season, but now you have one of the best jobs, which is given to my workers, some of my family members. Amen. She's promoted. First day on the job. Uh, but secondly, the Bible tells us, this is beautiful, it says he not only promoted her, but protected her. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And see, again, it's just a, a, a quick picture of the, the depravity of Israel at this time. How worldliness can creep into the church. How abuse can happen even in the, 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 the face of people who seem to be loving God. Have I not commanded them not to touch you? But he goes further than that. If you look further, he says later to his workers, don't reproach her, don't rebuke her. So not only does he care for her uh, physically, he also cares for her emotionally. But see, she doesn't even know that part. See, God cares about your emotional well-being as well. God cares that his children aren't walking around being embarrassed all the time. Particularly about... By, by those who are children of God too. So, so he promotes her, he protects her, he cares for her well-being, but, but um, he also praises her. He praises her. He says, all that you have done for your mother-in-law has been told, told to me. He has good works, but she has good works. You see? Uh, you see how it goes past just a profession of faith. A profession of faith ought to lead some, to some godly activity. Some good works on this side of glory. He says what you have done has, has been told to me and everybody. It was the talk of the town. Uh, she had went viral. She on Facebook and whatever social platforms y'all on, y'all know. Y'all was looking at it. But her reputation preceded her. One's loving devotion to someone else ought to make a difference in this world. The New Testament, Jesus was um, out and about one day. This is in Luke, but uh, he's out. And, and there's a centurion who comes to Jesus. And, and the centurion says, hey, hey, I, I need you to come. I need you to heal somebody. And I need you to heal, heal somebody for me. And, 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 and um, he says, but no, don't even come. Just say the word. The Bible says Jesus marveled at his faith. If she was in the New Testament, it would say Jesus marveled at her faith. 
And beloved brothers and sisters, Jesus marvels any time he sees the children of God doing the true work of God. Amen. Somebody else praised her. But before I move on to our second point, I want you to notice uh, here in the text, I'm sure you saw it, after he praised her, the text says Boaz prayed for her. He said, the Lord, this is verse 12, I'm in Bible territory. It says, the Lord repay you for what you have done. And a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. He prays that the Lord repay her, not only repay her partially, but a full reward be given to her by her good deeds and her good works on this, in this world. He prays a blessing upon her. He prays a blessing and, and the craziest part is he is ultimately going to be an answer to his own prayer. Uh, you better be careful how you pray. <laughs> God has a strange way of accomplishing answered prayer. But see, he's a usable person, isn't he? He's a vessel who's willing to be used by the Lord no matter the cost. He prays. We'll see later. God's going to use him to answer his own prayer. Uh, there's something else beautiful here. And I just want to touch on it real quick and we'll move on. Um, he says, uh, uh, he uses a metaphor. Um, Under whose wings thou art came to trust. It's a metaphor in scripture. Jesus used it as well. But it's a picture of a frightened bird um, uh, kind of scouring and hovering under beneath their, their mother's wings for, for safety and for protection. And, and that's really a picture of salvation, isn't it? That, that God is our refuge and strength. That God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. And, and so anyone who has ever placed their faith in Jesus, that's the picture you're coming up under him as your hiding place. I must ask this question. I must put it out to you all. Is that your confession as well? Have you come up under the wings of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you placed your faith in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness? Nothing else. Not, not your baptism. Not your, your, your how long you've been going to church. Not your um, activity. Not your uh, trustee work. Or not your deaconess work. None of that. Have you placed your faith in Jesus Christ? Beloved, that, that's all that counts. That's, that's all that counts. When you get to glory, you can't say, Lord, I done did all this stuff. He gonna... No. All you can say is Jesus. That, that's the only acceptable term. Don't, don't get it confused. And the reason I, I want to press there, and, and Paul's simply right there. I, I've talked to a number of people the past two months, and I ask them where their hope lies, and they're not sure. They're, they go to church. You hear me plainly. You must place your faith in Jesus Christ. Can't be your mama's faith, your granddaddy's faith, your pastor's faith. Nobody, it must be your faith. Amen. Comes up under the wings of the Lord Jesus. Psalm 212 says, Blessed are those who put their trust in him. Secondly, we're almost done. God blesses first through his gracious people, but secondly, God blesses us, church through his gracious provisions. Um, yeah, a cute story I came across the other day. I think my, my mother-in-law gave it to me. There was an old lady who came out on her porch every morning and she would raise her arms to the sky and shout, praise the Lord. And uh, one day um, an atheist neighbor moved next door and he became irritated by this woman who was always worshiping, always praising the Lord. And every morning he can hear her saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And he would shout, uh, he would counter her. He would shout, there is no Lord. So this went on um, several months and one morning in the middle of winter, the woman came out on her porch and shouted, praise the Lord, praise your Lord, please reveal your will to me because Lord, I have no food, I'm, I'm starving, I, 
I have no more food. Please provide, O oh Lord. The next morning when she came out on her porch, lo and behold, two huge bags of groceries were there. And she said, praise the Lord. And she's crying and she's, she's jumping up and down and, and she's waving her hand. She says, God has provided these groceries for me. And just then the atheist jumps out of the bushes. He, he jumps out. He shouts, I told you there is no Lord. I bought those groceries. <laughs> Without skipping a beep, this, this uh, little old lady, she, she raised her arms back in the air and she says, praise the Lord. He, he provided me with groceries, but he used the devil to pay for them. <laughs> Let this little lady's faith <laughs> teach us that God's blessings do in fact show up in ordinary provisions that we receive daily Amen. he woke you up this morning God started you on your way the Lord is blessing you right now and see the truth is church we must be reminded and uh, rediscover that the only way that we have ever made it in this life has not been from our, our paychecks. It has not been from the food that we went and purchased at the grocery store. It has not been because of our hard work. You got those degrees. You got multiple master's degrees. I know. You ain't pay for those degrees on your own. You didn't get them scholarships on your own. They weren't by your own intuition. They weren't by your smarts. They weren't by your genius. They were from the hand of of God to you as a blessing. Solomon said it this way. He says, all things come of thee, O Lord. And Solomon was rich, rich. Solomon not only was rich, rich, he had more wisdom than any person on earth. And Solomon, with the wisdom of any, more wisdom than anybody on this earth, simply said, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given unto thee. It all comes from the Lord. I know we got Costco. I know we got Safeway. And it still came from the Lord. The Lord provides our every needs according to his riches and glory. At the end of the day, uh, I'm in 17 now. At the end of the day, we're almost done. Um, <clears throat> Ruth beat out and winnowed the grain that she had gleaned. And she came back and collected. Uh, scholars say that she, she came back with almost the equivalent of a half a month's wages just in one day. Um, scholars believe that she came home with approximately 30 to 50 pounds of food. Then she carried it all the way back home. And just to give you um, some footing and, and some context here, um, typically in these days, gleaners would typically come back with just one to two pounds of food. Here she is with 30 pounds and, or 50 pounds of food. And see, it's, it's because of the provision which Naomi says, where on earth did you glean from today? I mean, she got up out, uh, out of her bed. She saw her daughter-in-law hauling this, this grocery order back home. She said, where have you worked? <clears throat> Beloved brothers and sisters, it was so much, the only thing she could do was pray. Yes. Uh -huh. The provision was so much, she had not had that much food. The, the kitchen table was empty. The cupboards were empty. And now they got bread enough to spare. She only good thing she could do was pray. Ruth does not understand the significance of it all. She just simply says, uh, some dude named Boaz? I don't know. Strange name. But he was nice. And see that space between uh, verse 19 and verse 20, I think is critical for us because you could just see and you can, you can see Naomi's uh, uh, mind working. You can see the wheels turning. You can see the lights turn on in her mind. And um, now she can see. And if this was again in the sitting in the New Testament, it would say something like, and she came to herself. 
And, and she now came to herself. She did not see God's uh, love for her in the providence of God. She could not see it. She could not see God's love for her in the person of God. She did not know it at the time, but she could see the love of God working all things together for her good in the provision that God had provided through another channel. Boaz. She began to bless. She began to bless. She prayed and then more, the Bible tells us that she began to praise. Uh, she says, thank the Lord that he has not forsaken us. The, the blessing came from Boaz. She ascribed the blessing to God. Y'all not in here. Uh, you two. Y'all know people really like watch us on YouTube, though. Like, I was talking to somebody the other day. She said, oh, I love watching you on YouTube. I said, really? I didn't know. Um, it was ordinary. She saw that it was extraordinary. The food on your table that, that you just simply pray, pray a quick blessing over, she said, was extraordinary. We have so much of it sometimes, we just think it's so ordinary. But see, the, the challenge, church, is that these provisions that we have in our bank accounts, in our homes, in our refrigerators, in our closets are often symbols of God's blessings, but you would not know it because you're not looking for that. God has been blessing. Next time you need a blessing, just look in your fridge. Next time you need a blessing, just look at your closet at the clothes you don't wear no more and it still ain't give away. These are all symbols of God's blessings. But, but Naomi, she says, the Boaz's kindness is the Lord's kindness. When you show kindness to someone else, it's God's kindness. Wherever on this God's green earth you see someone love, there you will find God. Anytime you see someone, a child of God, love someone else, there you find God working. But again, it doesn't look like it, does it? It often doesn't feel like it. But it's still the blessing of God upon his people. She had food. It was the food that made her praise. It wasn't all the extraordinary stuff. Just food. It, it moved her from a place of bitterness to blessing. It moved her from sorrow to now supplication. It moved her from her trials and tragedies to now triumphing in, in the gracious hand of God working it all out. Now she could see God's hand upon our life. And oftentimes, beloved brothers and sisters, you all know the true fact that sometimes it just feels like God is not with us. But, but I, I just want to encourage you to just look and see at all the people that he has placed in your life. Amen. Pastor Hayes. <laughs> uh, I love CK. Deacon Parker, Amen. Pastor Queen, uh, God has been, he has placed so many people in our lives. But the question is, have you thanked God for them? Amen. Have you prayed for them? Uh, everything that you have has came from the hand of God. Amen. And we ought to count our blessings. Let me end you with this. Um, I like reading hymns and nowadays and reading the stories behind the hymns, but this was a familiar one. There was a, um, a family by the name of the Martins, and they had a wonderful friendship with a, uh, a couple by the name of the Doolittles. They were true saints of God, and um, Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for about 20 years, and her husband was, um, he was disabled, and um, he had to propel himself to and from his wheelchair every day for, for work and for business. But despite their afflictions, they were always upbeat. They were always happy people and uh, lived wonderful lives and were inspiring to everybody who came their way. And one day while visiting them, 
uh, the Martins asked the Doolittles, what is, what is the secret? Why are y'all so happy? How are you making it through like this with so much joy? And their response was simply this, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And so they picked up the pen and they're, they're gripped by this and they try to write some lyrics and, and it wasn't working out. They sent it to their, their friend, uh, uh, Mr. Gabriel, and Mr. Gabriel came back with these words. He says, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should I feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? My constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. I know he is watching me. Naomi, with the provisions, can simply believe that God's eye was upon her. She said, I know he's watching me. Brothers and sisters, God can take your broken yesterdays and make them better todays. But we must count our blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you by what the Lord God has done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for uh, providing us with godly people and with uh, godly saints and people with the right words at the right time for the right reasons and um, uh, right moment for encouragement's sake. Lord, we thank you that you have continued to work all these, these things out for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. Lord, thank you for the provisions, Lord. Thank you that you have given us everything that we need uh, and then some. You have given us Christ and because you have given us Christ, there is nothing else that you would hold back from us that is good. So, Heavenly Father, I ask that um, you would help us to see your hand working in our lives, O oh Lord, even in the midst of difficult circumstances and trials. Heavenly Father, I pray that um, you would use this word, O oh Lord, whatever was profitable, that you would implant it on our hearts. Whatever uh, was not profitable, I pray that you would help us to forget those words, O oh Heavenly Father. We pray that you would be glorified and we would be edified for the sake of your darling son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, please continue to move in a mighty way your wonders to perform. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. 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 And amen. As the uh, musicians make their way back, I um, uh, simply want to invite you to consider uh, what you heard this morning, what you read in God's Word, and um, just simply meditate on perhaps one of the points. Maybe it's a, a godly person who God led into your life that you want to give thanks for. Maybe it's a, a godly parent who had prayed for you. Maybe it's a godly friend that God had brought at that right time just for you, and he done it just for you. I hope you know that, right? Um, maybe it's a, about a provision or provisions that God has made, the blessing. It came right on time, and, and, and you know it, and you needed it, and you had not told anybody about it, but God was able to work it out to bring it to you in your time of need, and so you need to praise him for it, and so as we get ready to um, depart from here, I want you to just simply, I want to invite you to just meditate upon, upon the goodness of God, amen? And how he's working in our lives through ordinary people and provisions, not always extraordinary things. Amen? Amen. So we want to count our blessings. We want to count our blessings. As we get ready to depart from here, uh, we're going to close with prayer and um, our benediction. But if you could, if you could just simply rest on your feet, we will um, close out in prayer. Bow with me. Heavenly Father, as we depart from here, but never from your presence, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be transformed and not just informed, but... Um, have a renewed mind that you would send us back out into this world with a revived hope, uh, with, um, with new eyes to see your blessings upon our lives. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us to live with a fervency and a sense of urgency out in this dying world. 
Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to line up our deeds and our words and um, that there would be some concision of speech and right actions to follow that up. Heavenly Father, for you say in your word that they will know that we are your disciples by the way that we love one another. And so, Lord, above all, help us to love. Heavenly Father, as we get ready to depart from here, we ask that you would go before us, that you would prepare, prepare the way before us, Lord God, that you would be our rear guard, that you would guard us continually, O oh Heavenly Father. And now unto him, who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. Let the church say amen, 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 amen. and amen. You are dismissed.